Okay, welcome back. This should be the uh, the last video for the uh, for the rudder and the fin. What I wanted to go over uh, earlier, I had a piece of a metal metal push rod, and um, what I have here is some uh, magnets <coughs> that I got from Walmart. I think a couple of a couple of bucks or something for for a box of magnets. And um, what I'm going to do with these is uh, I ran my push rod <coughs> uh, housing through the uh, through the uh, through the boom and inside of the push rod housing I have a metal uh, a metal push rod and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these magnets along the outside of the boom see how that sticks not very well but it's because it's holding up you know the weight of the cardboard and stuff but I'm going to run magnets along the side of the boom and these magnets are going to hold that uh, the magnets are going to hold that uh, that metal rod against the uh, against the inside of the boom and that metal rod since it's inside of the push rod it's going to hold the push rod against it and then from this end I can hold it up and I can drip thin CA down it and the thin CA will run down the length of the boom along the inside and stick everything together. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, elevator. Oh, by the way, the hole that I made, I made it using a uh, Dremel, uh, not a Dremel, an uh, uh, X-Acto knife with a number 11 blade. And then I elongated it using a, uh, a small uh, rat tail file. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try to mount those, uh, those push rods, and uh, we'll see where that goes. All right, welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> uh, I've got my push rod installed. Uh, I dripped a lot of glue down the, uh, a lot of thin CA down the uh, down the boom. And uh, when I was done, well, I just removed the, uh, the metal rod there. Uh, when I was done with that, I let it cure for a little bit, and then I pulled off the uh, magnets, gave it a, a good shake, and. Uh, there's nothing loose inside there, so that's good. The next step is to get my <clears throat> original carbon rod back. And slide her inside. Oh yeah, that's nice. And then uh, kind of figure out where I'm gonna put my servo. So the carbon rod goes into this little insert and then my servo can probably go right in there. Let's see if that's enough movement. I want to give myself just a little gap there. And that is about the farthest forward I can put that servo. So now I'm going to mark it. <clears throat> And, oh yeah, I also want to mark where this is. What I'm going to do is I've got some, uh, some balsa scraps here. And I'm going to put a little ramp underneath this. Underneath this push rod. I'm just going to put a little ramp right there to kind of build it up a little bit and take some of the pressure off the, uh, off the servo and kind of align things a little bit better. I think it'll be uh, a, lot, uh, a lot sexier that way. Um, but I'm going to mount the servo. And I'm going to mount the, uh, you know, my standoff, and that's pretty much it. That'll be that'll be the end of the rudder. And welcome back. <clears throat> I've uh, I've taken a little bit of a break here. I, I think doing the video and you know, trying to think about the video and trying to think about the airplane was kind of kind of wearing on me a little bit. So what I did was I, I took a little bit of a break. And I tried to get some stuff accomplished. <clears throat> One of the first things that I did <clears throat> was uh, I took my battery, and this is a pretty small battery. I know that I know this battery is very small. This is a uh, 240 milliamp hours. It's uh, Hyperion. I know it's really small, and I know I'm going to need nose weight to balance the whole thing out. But uh, I ended up cutting. What I wanted to do we just kind of put the battery on there and then slide the, the nose cone over it. <clears throat> but that, that's kind of proving to be 
difficult. The, um, I wanted to do the same thing with the servos. I wanted to flush mount the servos and then just slide the nose cone over. And what I noticed was that uh, that wasn't going to work. The, uh, when the servo was on its side, it was just it was not working. Um, there was not enough room inside the pod for the servo arms and the servo case itself to sit flush up here on, on the side. Uh, basically the servo was pushed all the way against this side, it was laying on its side, and then I had rubbing on this side of the pod and this side of the pod. So what I did <clears throat> was I cut a couple of holes and dropped in my servos. Um, I make the holes a little bit longer than the servo, just a s touch longer. I don't know if you guys can see this this amount of movement. It's you know maybe a quarter of an inch of movement. And then I use the uh, sub trims to kind of center the uh, servo. And then I hook up all my linkages. And then I use uh, the slot to move the servo back and forth until the control surface is centered, or looks like it's centered. And then what I do is from the back side, I just go in with one of my favorite substances, hot glue, and I go around the servo. <clears throat> And again, I know it's heavy, and you know we've we've uh, I've talked about this before. It's not a competition glider. You know, it's just something for me to have fun with. So it's okay. You know, the few extra grams here, uh, I think I can live with that. Right now, the plan is to mount my receiver here. I have a receiver kicking around somewhere. <clears throat> There's a receiver. I plan on putting my receiver here. And I'm going to have the two antenna exiting the pod towards the back, and I'm going to have this uh, this harness going up into the uh, uh, up out of here. <clears throat> so basically, I've got to run this harness. I've got to finish mounting this servo. I have to finish trimming this pushrod tube, and then build the little uh, the little support bridge here to bring the uh, to bring the pushrod tube up there. Uh, I've got to install the pushrod and put the end on it. Now these ends are uh, they're basically just super glued on to the carbon and uh, they, they seem to be working really well. Not a whole lot of not a whole lot of, uh, of movement. In the back side, <clears throat> you know I probably made some mistakes by by letting this uh, exit a little bit too close to the elevator and so what I had to do is I had to make a it's just a really tight angle down here. It's a really tight angle. There is enough movement. I've, I've checked it and I've confirmed it and trimmed it. So there is enough movement here for the elevator. In fact, there's more than enough movement. Same thing with the rudder. There's more than enough movement. But if I had to do this again, uh, I would probably send the rudder push rod out up here so that the angle is a lot less because it, it, you know, the, the tighter the angle, it makes quite a bit of of a tension there and I would probably have the elevator exit pretty far up here and uh, you know just to kind of take some of the tension off of it um, anyway <clears throat> that's where I am now I'm mounting the uh, the servo gear or the servos and uh, and the battery and the receiver and uh, we'll see when uh, we'll see in the next video how far I've gotten <clears throat>